Good morning. I'm out by a church close to my home that I like go, going to when, uh, when I want to think and uh, when I want to be in peace and quiet and just uh, reflect on my life and the world and the paths that we're taking as a family, Michelle and myself. And um, this is the first morning that it's been really quite cold. I have big gloves on and um, there's a crispness in the air. I wanted to talk about um, this topic of thriving again. These times obviously are absolutely whack and <clears throat> that doesn't mean that we can't have a good life. And I happen to be surrounded by a lot of people that are having a good life. Many of them don't quite understand what's going on in the world. If they did understand, I think they'd be a bit, uh, the, uh, a bit antsy, a little bit nervous. But I'm also surrounded by people who do get it and are still thriving. And as our completely crazy leaders, national leaders, corporate leaders, NGO leaders, think tank leaders are flippantly talking about nuclear war and further limitations and attacks on democracy. It seems to be all in a day's job for them. They don't seem to care about our desires. You know, if you if you if you're not paying attention to anything but mainstream media, you probably don't know this. But when you're actually going to to the real world, you take the red pill, exit the matrix, you go to alternative media. I mean, Europe is on the brink of revolution. Riots everywhere. Well, not everywhere, but there are significant... Riots isn't even the right word, but significant grassroots people's uprising saying that, you know, we don't need you guys in government. You clearly only think about yourself. You have no, no mind for what's in our best interests. You're going to tell us that we're going to freeze, or that we're going to lose all of our military in a pointless war, completely making our own nations vulnerable, going to ensure that there's all kinds of clampdowns on civil liberties. Are you, are you telling me that this is going to be the norm now? No, fuck no. No, we're just not having it. We're just not having it. Seeing it in Italy, in Czech, in Germany. I happen to live in, in Sweden. It's probably the country in the world where people trust the government and the systems the most. Um, there's a lot that I love about this country, but it's also quite likely one of the um, last countries to start objecting to government overreaches. I think in, in actual fact it's probably one of the countries that is most vulnerable to tyranny. Because if you have no skepticism as to the systems, you, you're just going to say like a warm welcome to any tyrant that's just like, hello, I'm gonna rule over you. Mm. Oh yeah, we trust you. <laughs> I mean, I love Sweden and obviously I'm not from here and there's so much I like about this country, but you know, people are very scared to think for themselves, which scares me a little bit. Nevertheless, as I said, there are a lot of people who get it and uh, I, I want to let's look at why people are happy when they get it and when... Um, yeah, they understand what's at stake. And one of the things that I found is just flexibility. To have the ability and the willingness to change my life. A lot of people who get it, they move out of cities right now. Because 
cities are going to be very vulnerable to a lot of the well imagine a black down in the city imagine the loss of food supply in the city it's going to be pandemonium like when you live close to farms you can work with the farmers you can establish healthy relationships with the few neighbors that you do have and um and move towards more of a sovereign lifestyle to grow more of your own food you can be more self-sustaining this is much harder in the city we do expect this madness to yeah I, whether it starts dissipating next year or it will take five years i'm not quite sure I have friends who think that is going to continue the rest of our lifetimes, but I am, I'm not one of them. I already see significant awakening starting to happen next spring, because especially here in Europe, now that there's all kinds of people's uprisings, when we're going to move through winter without significant, or with the potential for significant blackouts, people are going to be fucking freezing. We're expecting uh, a shortage of food, in part because of the kinds of things that EU is currently doing in Netherlands, where EU is just telling, yeah, you, you need to cut down on the nitrogen emissions from farming, so we're just going to take your farms away from you. We're going to make it impossible for you to farm and make food, and that means that there's less food for all of us to eat. And the impact of that is going to come a bit later, but a lot of people don't think about, okay, so increasing in price is one thing, but loss of supply is way worse. So you want to be in a place where there is a sense of like community and people coming together to, to go through rough times. Because they will get worse before they get better. I mean, there's no question about this. Another thing like the flexibility that we have is we're we've chosen to live with a couple uh friends of ours so that we're actually financially better off <laughs> you know even though the electricity prices are increasing a lot so we're doing this in part financially but also in part just because we love being with people and um, both michelle and i we have learned to live in more of a communal way and we like it of course, it depends very much on the kinds of people that you're with and also the kinds of systems that you use. Because if you don't have solid systems when living with people, it's going to be very hard. And we have tons of space, like tons of space, so it's no problem whatsoever. Another thing, of course, is to have some level of ease of mind that you, you have prepared for shortages of food and... Um, a loss of electricity. One of the things that I'm very happy about with our property is that we we have a well, so we're not part of the the commune or municipality system. That's great, but the the downside is that we we have a need for uh, power to get the water out of the well, and if there's no electricity we obviously we can't get waters and so even even we even though we specifically looked for a well we don't have this kind of old-fashioned pumping well where you have this metal handle that you pump 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 we don't have that one so then having a bit of food and water on hand is important and one of the <laughs> absurd things for me is that both in Norway and I'm Norwegian and here in Sweden, the government has sent out these leaflets about how to prepare. And, and I'm, I, I built, I built, you know, I helped loved ones prepare and that's part of why I can feel peaceful. Um, but governments are telling us outright that we should prepare. And still talking about preparing is like, oh, you're a prepper, you're some kind of domestic terrorist fascist, you know, what the fuck? <laughs> it's very strange, the kind of cognitive dissonance that, that is around this emerging realization that the, the times ahead of us, before they're going to get better, are going to be very rough. And so this is why also having an independent mind is so important. 
like I give less and less I care less and less about what people think and what I'm finding is people who care about what people think they are in grave danger right now grave danger because the kind of propaganda and the kind of psycholo psychological operations that are being pushed through the media and through the various three-letter intelligence agencies in the US and our own respective governments that are on some level puppet states in uh, US-NATO alliance. We, um, we are being manipulated through our need to be part of consensus reality. And the more you want to be part of consensus reality, to not stick out like a sore thumb, the more you're in danger. Because, well, look at the inoculation, for instance. At this point, well, we, many of us knew this from early on, but now, Pfizer has admitted that no, we didn't even check if these vac vaccines uh, protected against transmission. We didn't even check it. We just had to, had to move with the speed of the science. As a statement, I don't remember her name, but she was a uh, Pfizer executive that was interrogated on this point. It was completely unscientific. And now, well, let's say there there are problems with this this treatment. I see a lot of people uh, have health problems, and I recommend everyone that I love to not take more of these things. But if you care about what everyone else thinks about you, you're going to do that instead. You're gonna you're gonna do what they what the peer pressure the the kind of the consensus mind wants. And in every areas of life, it's going to be so important to actually think for ourselves where it comes to food and electricity, education, health, finance, finance. Like, you cannot thrive now if you keep all of your money in the bank. You just can't. Because the banks are probably at the end of their life cycle. So these are things to think about. And when you think about them, and you stop being so confused about what's happening in the world, and you make the steps that are required for you to have a calm nervous system and that you feel it's centered, then these times are amazing because there is a such a thrust of awakening in the population right now. The, the, these are times of awakening and the truth about the kind of world and the kind of systems that we have lived in is gradually starting to come out. And it's possible to thrive even in the presence of that. And I think this is the, the great invitation of these times. And what an exciting time to be alive. What a terrifying time to be alive, but what an exciting time to be alive. And I just think that getting right with your creator with the universe, however you want to speak to it, is going to be central to these times. So that's why I keep coming to this church. It's an interesting part of Sweden, this. It was just, uh, the, the area, apparently, that the church had the greatest challenge with christening. And now there's like 10 churches in the area. And it seems like the spiritual foundation that's so absent in urban areas is more present here. Um, there's just something wholesome about the countryside. People are more salt of the earth, more practical, more embodied, and I like being here. And um, I like coming here and um, feeling God and feeling expanded feeling like life is fucking good you know even given everything that's happening so hope you take some inspiration and solace from this get out 
get right with your creator, make the steps that are required to thrive in these times, and we're gonna get through this just fine. And um, it's gonna be wild. It's gonna be wild, right? Let's let's not kid ourselves. But we're here for it, man. We're totally here for it. Making the steps to bring humanity in a positive direction. So I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you again soon. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. And uh, if you want more content on truth and thriving in these times of awakening, make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you get to catch the next one the moment it comes out. See you next time.